Good evening. Welcome to the September 9th, 2024 meeting of the Stillwater City Council. This time I will call the meeting to order and I'll ask that you all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, counselors, first up we have the consent docket. Questions, comments, or action on consent? Motion right, to move. accept consent docket. Second. A motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Please vote. With a vote of five to zero, the consent docket is approved. We have item six is public hearings. There is an item 6A, receive public comment regarding a request from Series 7 of Go Forth Murray Properties LLC for a map amendment. This item has actually been withdrawn at the applicant's request. I don't think we need any further action except to say that the applicant has withdrawn the application. So we will skip item six and go to item seven, general orders. 7A is discussion and possible action of Washington School Advisory Committee's recommended work plan for 2024. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I would like to introduce Chair of the Washington School Advisory Committee, Karen Washington. She is accompanied by Washington School Heritage Foundation member, Jim Beckstrom. I will be available after to answer any questions and I do have a recommended motion if requested. Thank you, Christy. Somebody will have to help me because this is in a different format than I was expecting. <laughs> Those darn formats. <laughs> Someone will have to help us. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. We can, we'll we can try still present this. on that. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Karen Washington, and I'm proud to say that I have been chosen to be the president of the Washington School Advisory Committee, which I will sometimes refer to as team because I like team. Let's them know that we're all in this together. <laughs> so, and I, before I get started with my comments, I'd like to express thanks to the city. And you know what they say when you start naming people, you're going to miss somebody. But I do want the city and everybody that was involved that made the Washington School back in the hands of the city, I do want to say thank you. I also want to express our appreciation for creating a Washington School Advisory Committee slash team so that we can help make a difference and keep that legacy alive. And for that, I say thank you very much. So the advisory team has gotten together. I think we have a good team that works together. It represents our community really well. They've got a lot of energy and a lot of interest. So for that, we appreciate and thank them for that. Uh, we've also set out and and establish a Washington School project team. And what they're going to do, they look for different ways for funding and different things like that. The team leader for that is going to be Jim Bigstrom, and he's going to give you a lot more details of that because he's very instrumental in our working plan. What we're asking from the city council to do is to support us. We're requesting support in our plan. And he'll, he'll talk over the plan with you and take any questions. We're support, asking your support for the plan. We want you to know up front, we understand that funding is challenging for everybody in today's world. But even with that said, without a plan, you don't have a solution in the end. So we still need that plan and we still need other things that we can do to work on while we're working on that plan. And one of the things we're asking for your support is like in-kind services, like getting roll laws for volunteers and come out, we can do some cleanup things as well. So the in-kind, that would be very supportive and very helpful. So we're requesting you to consider that for us as well. And we also request your continued support. We will get there and we know it will take some time. We have the patience, we have the interest, we have the energy to make it happen. So Certain things we can do now, we want to do whatever we can do now. So we also would like you to place the November 16th 
on your calendar for our work day. We're working toward that. We want to support not just the Washington School, but the community. So we've looked at the uh, football season and all the different things that happens in the community. So we try to find us a spot that does not keep up, that keep, does not keep us from supporting other things in the community. So we would like the city council to consider that as well for as our support. With that being said, I appreciate the time, and this time I'll let James Bickstrom come up and speak further. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Do I just hit arrow? Do I just push what? Next arrow. Next arrow. Okay, got it. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, the, the, the heart of the school was built Jim. around. I'm sorry. That mic up Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, the uh, kind of the vintage part of the school was built in 1938. It's a T-shaped structure, kind of like a lot of the armories where you have administrative offices on the front end, and then you have a big gymnasium off the back. And and what we're looking at here in this photo is a 1940s vintage uh, uh, picture of um, kind of the original structure. Uh, history has it that there was actually a one-room schoolhouse on this block preceding this, okay, but this was the first kind of really massive structure they had for a school on the block. And uh, that is uh, the vision of the heritage facility ultimately, is that this is the view you're going to have uh, of facility. Um, we already talked about the advisory fit, uh, committee being formed. Uh, Stillwater, the City of Stillwater commissioned a pro, uh, study by the 2020 group out of Tulsa. Um, and they, uh, and I'm going to go through that report real quickly, uh, just some high points. Uh, we had a very successful fundraiser in February. We made about $38,000. Uh, that was a um, huge kickstart. And we're going to talk about a bit about how that's, that's going to enable some work that we're going to be able to do very near term. Um, Karen's the head of the advisory committee, and uh, we've got a redevelopment plan kind of already kind of lined out, and that's one of the things we just want to share with you for today. Um, the 2020 team had a large group of stakeholders. They got a lot of people involved. Um, Stephen Ghost, for example, some local folks. Uh, Lambert Construction was involved as well from a uh, project perspective, and then they had some other folks contribute some of the history and importance. Um, it's a historically and culturally uh, significant site, um, arguably the best candidate in the region for a heritage site. Uh, so it's a really great opportunity for the city of Stillwater. Um, the, the structure itself is very sound, um, uh, remarkably sound, considering uh, it's somewhat rough life being in a flood zone. Uh, there is absolutely no evidence of flooding inside the facility, which is mind blowing because it's chest high water every 50 or 60 years. Um, so, but we can we can work around that. Those are things that we can we can work with. Um, we want to do some things to, to reinforce and preserve the part of the structure that we want to keep. So there's some things we want to do to kind of bolster what we have. Um, there's some trees that are growing into the foundation. So we're going to talk a bit about the kind of the project steps. Uh, one of the big things that um, 2020 said is let's focus on preserving what we have and we need to clear out the stuff that really isn't what you call historically significant I'm not saying they're not important, but the heart of the structure is the 1938 facility, which is what you see here This is a rendering that 2020 put together uh, The entire block is the side of the school and this is the core This is the heart of, of the uh, vintage structure um, that we kind of see the heritage facility being built around. I wanted to kind of show some um, images of, of what can be. Um, what's interesting is that on the top left corner here, this is actually from the uh, African American Heritage Site, and I think, think in Washington, D.C. It's interesting that the room, the main room of that facility is interestingly similar to what the gymnasium looks like in the Washington School uh, uh, site and um, I think it's it's a great a great way of illustrating how you can have a multifunctional space with all these heritage uh, um, emblems around the upper part of the wall so you, you can still utilize the room for anything you want to utilize and it's still acting as a way to honor the heritage of the facility um, the uh, we've actually got uh, uh, D uh, David Hoffer involved who is involved in Greenwood Rising he wants to help us with this project and so on the top right here you actually see that's that's the entrance to Greenwood Rising 
um, just part of it is that you can have these subtle um, in, um, insets. There's things you can do in the facility uh, that are really powerful and, and help people get the message and, and appreciate the heritage, the history of a facility, and still retain functionality. Because one of the things we've talked about is this creating a useful space for the city. Uh, the, the idea is not that this is a museum. The idea is that this is going to be a space that's of value and multifunctional for the city of Stillwater. Um, the Lowry Activity Center is another gymnasium that is used heavily. It's a great gathering, gathering space. So there's, we've got great precedents for applying. The library does this too, where they've taken the old gymnasium and they get a lot of good use out of that. The other thing it's, uh, we have in mind and we've talked about is the multifunctional aspect of the gymnasium and actually use it as a gymnasium. I mean, there's no reason we couldn't actually have sports and athletic events to have synergies with the YMCA that's going to be right next door. So there's a lot of room, I think, for opportunity um, to work together with that organization. Um, we've got, these are just some images to capture some thoughts about, you know, what you might honor and, and recognize within that facility, the athletics program, the educational program. Uh, recognize the uh, faculty of the, of the school and I wanted to include this other image in the bottom right hand corner so uh, the Pershing stu uh, Studios I don't know has anybody been to the Pershing Studios in Tulsa okay uh, Tom Wallace who's Wallace Engineering um, kind of helped redevelop downtown Tulsa the Guthrie Green he was instrumental in Guthrie Green Wallace Engineering is literally right across the street from Guthrie Green uh, great guy, great vision, um, and he bought the Pershing School, uh, was, which was built in 1918, um, and it's a multi. He's actually converted it into studios. Um, so he's one of the cool things he's done is he's retained this classroom feel of the. Everybody wanted their apartments to actually look like classrooms, and so so they retained the blackboards. But the, the point was is that these are rooms that are used for things other than education and they're not but they they kept the vibe and so there's a lot of things you can do in facilities like this to kind of keep the feel and also retain a uh, high functionality for other things um, one of the things we we, uh, we want to do and this is a 2020 finding and, and is is to kind of clear out um, some of the more modern facilities that are to some extent in disrepair um, and so what I've shown here is very similar views of the front of the building from 1940 till today and one of the things that's sitting right in front of the, the right in front of the uh of the building is an auditorium that hung in, which is actually in our right of way <laughs> so so when you look at uh what's what's coming we we need to clear out some of these ancillary buildings and so here's a top view of uh the of the 1938 structure outlined in red 12th avenue to the top of your slide here um and there's wings on the east and west and on the very south end there's an old cafeteria and there's these breezeways that are all connecting and they're in uh, pretty rough shape in fact there's an example of what some of the breezeways look That's like um, so a um, couple things one is is that from from my review of the facility all of that steel was used when they put it up 60 years ago so it's it's old iron it still has value for recycle but um, so we're going to be looking at taking the breezeways down front and around on the back side as well um, I talked to somebody who was involved in the redevelopment of the of the South High School, which is now the library. And one of the comments they made is that the the uh, roof in the gymnasium is actually in much better shape than the roof of the South High School library was before they made a library out of it. So, um, so that's I mean, this, we keep getting the, kind of this feedback that this is a really really good structure to to, re, to restore and put back into service. Uh, there are some trees literally growing out of the foundations around the building, and they need to go. And so we've got a plan to get rid of those. I'll talk about those in a minute. There are some sections of the roof in the part of the school that we want to uh, save that have been compromised a bit. We just need to get them pushed back up and get that sealed up to keep the water out of the structure. Um, and again, we've already seen pictures of this, uh, of the breezeway um, in trouble. So um, the plan is to clear out everything but that core structure. And so that's the work, the work plan that we've actually shared with you and we're going to talk about in a minute is actually talking about how to do this um, and get moving like now. Uh, so clean. We had a cleanup day last year. Had good good involvement. So cleaning things out of the inside of the facility, um, and we 
Karen mentioned that there's another cleanup day. We're trying to align it with into the streets. The students helped us last year. Uh, the, they want to help us again this year. So we're going to um, try to line it up with, with November 16th. And uh, there's lots of stuff to pick up outside and some things to do inside too. Um, so I'm just, when I think about a big project like this, um, it reminds me of a very good friend of mine. Um, he used to always say, Jim, just, just one bite at a time, you know? That's how you eat an elephant, one bite at a time. And so uh, we think we could start doing the Pac-Man thing here and start chipping away and making progress. Uh, we have the will, we have willingness, we've had multiple people come up, let's go, we wanna help, we wanna help make some things happen. Um, so I don't wanna bore you with a Gantt chart, but the bottom line is, um, we want literally want to get started this fall. We've got people that said, hey, they want to help. They're ready to get going, and we'll start uh, taking trees down with your approval. I mean, this is your facility. It's a city facility, so we need endorsement of what we have in mind to go forward. Uh, but to get the trees down, um, start taking breezeways down, uh, things, things that we can do, um, do some assessments of... Um, we, one of the things we need to do right away, and they'll mention this as an asbestos, the make sure it's safe for people to work inside. Um, so we're, we're in the process of coordinating with the city to make sure that meets your requirements before we go inside. So we're not going to charge in. It's all, everything's going to be coordinated with the city. Um, this year, um, if we can get funding, when I say this year, it's fiscal year, so 20, mid-24, mid-25, mid uh, we would like to get the auditorium and the breezeway off the front of the school cleared out, which is going to provide, I think, a great aha moment because the front of that school has been hidden for so long that we've kind of forgotten what that looks like. And so um, we're going to do everything we can to, to help get the funding rounded up for that. Um, and then next year, uh, um, in 25-26, again, pending funding, everything is pending funding, uh, we would like to get the win wings cleared out. And so, you know, what we're looking for from the council is saying, yeah, we think this is a reasonable path forward. Um, we realize that funding is an issue, and we get that. None of, none of it's going to happen without funding, uh, but having a... a uh, a plan is kind of step number one. We like to get approval for that. Um, ideally, you know, we start designing year after next, you know, that we start getting a design phase. We've got people that are going to help us chase grants, which is a critically important part of the funding uh, bit as well. Um, so it's not unimaginable that we could be, you know, if we get round up a few bucks, start building things about three or four years. So anyway, we're looking for a year, near term plan through mid 2026 right now. I rattled that off pretty quick. Any questions? Counselors, questions? Um, just briefly, I know one of the issues we've talked about when it comes to some of the volunteer work was just making sure that from the legal perspective we feel comfortable with uh, liability and all that sort of thing. I assume the uh, city attorney's office is... Yeah, I've been asked briefly. I think they're going to do this asbestos study and then um, a city-sponsored work day would require a signing of a release for yeah, okay. participants. Well, um, I want to say thank you to, to you, Jim, to the committee, everybody who's been working on this so far. I mean, I, I know that this is a, um, I, there's a lot of people excited about this project and, a, and about what this can be. And certainly those pictures are, um, are really exciting in terms of where this could be in a couple of years. Um, we've already, you, you have been able to raise some money already. I think there's some other folks out there in the community who would say, we want to be a part of this. And so we're hopeful we can, we can do that. I think we as a council would say, you know, to the extent we can find, we had this conversation about parks and public spaces and looking for more funding overall for all of that as, as this would be part of that. And so we're, we're certainly on the hunt as well for additional funding because this is something that our community needs to do. We, we need to get this accomplished and we need to get it accomplished, um, you know, sooner rather than later um, with new construction, hopefully from the YMCA nearby and new sports fields nearby. This could be really uh, a part of a big gem on the south side of, of 12th Avenue. And so um, really appreciate the work you're doing and, and um, we're, gonna, we're gonna try to come alongside you wherever we can. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Did you have a motion for us, Christy? Oh, or do you have more? I did have a few Vice more Mayor? things. Jim, Sorry. if I could ask just a little bit. I'm, I get to work on projects like this in my day job, so I'm excited to have one in our community that's um, so impactful and important. 
Um, but I'm curious about mm-hmm. funding because we all know, like you said, that things don't happen without those dollars and that can be challenging to find the dollars right. for projects like this. Can you tell us a little bit more? So in my work on the asbestos and kind of environmental conditions on the site, there's funding available for that if we want to look at opportunities for that. Um, this project would be very well suited if that's the case, whether it's for the surveys themselves or the actual removal of those um, materials. But also there could be funding within that framework from a redevelopment perspective on sites like this to help with the visioning and planning. Can we come talk to you? I would love to talk to you. (laughs) Yeah, But I just am curious. I mean, I think I would just suggest as you're biting off pieces of this elephant that there's kind of these pre-design, how do we secure the building? How do we make sure we're protecting this important asset? And there's funding and there's buckets of funding for that. And then there's buckets of funding for visioning and planning and engaging the community. And then there's buckets of funding for capital investment. And so I would just encourage you to kind of think of those bites when you come yeah. when it comes to funding and if I can support based on my experience. Okay. Um, well thank you. Thank you very much. We've we've been doing quite a bit of research on on grants. In fact we were just Laura and I were just talking a few minutes ago about a new grant offer that's come out from the feds directly aimed at African-American high schools. <laughs> so projects well, like this. Well, I think this, there's so, so many opportunities here from a, yeah. um, from the historic uh, importance of the, of the site to um, the user, potential users of the site. There's, there's lots of different avenues and angles to pursue funding for a project like this. Um, so... Well, thank you. No, we'll we'll be you'll be hearing from us. No, thank you very much. Any any other questions? I had one last question. Okay. With, related to the asbestos, and so I see there's asbestos and mold assessment. I would I think we probably, depending on what the end users will be, also need to look at a lead-based paint assessment for a property like this as well. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, thank you. No, got it. Okay, I'm out. This is a lengthy motion recommended, and so I apologize for that, but it does capture our November 16th proposed workday that would be a city-coordinated workday where we've already talked to waste management about having roll-offs available so that we could truly coordinate that cleanup of that exterior that we've spoken about. So you will be seeing more in the community of that moving forward, depending on how the next little bit goes. (laughs) Okay, so recommendation for a motion to approve the proposed work plan as it relates to the work process on the facility via access agreement and funded by the Washington School Heritage Foundation, direct staff to continue to include the Washington School in conversations of funding needs for public spaces and amenities, and direct staff to continue work on the coordination of a workday scheduled for November 16th for the exterior and grounds of the facility and to provide support and roll-off containers for the volunteer workday. Councilors? I move to approve staff recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the recommendation. Please vote. The vote of five to zero, that is approved. So we're looking forward to that. If you're out there and you're interested in helping with this project, your first next chance, well, your first chance is to write us a check, or write a check to to the Washington School Foundation. Uh, November 16th workday, come out, uh, come see the facility. If you have not been out to see this facility, come help on November 16th and see what it is and see what it can be in our community. Thank you all for being here. You just brought up something now. Somebody wants to write a check. Who do they write the check to? Well, for now, Stillwater Community, Stillwater Community Center Foundation. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. For, for right now, the Stillwater Community Center Foundation, the Washington School uh, Heritage Team is a subcommittee under the Stillwater Community Center Foundation. Okay. We are in the process of forming the 501c3 now. Uh, so donations can be made to Stillwater Community Center Foundation with a note for Washington School, and it'll end up in that account. Thank you, okay. Jim. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for asking. That takes us to item eight, resolutions. Resolution number CC-2024-27, a resolution of the Stored City Council approving the submission of an application for fiscal year 2024 airport improvement program discretionary funds administered by the Federal Aviation Administration for airport infrastructure improvements at Sewater Regional Airport and approving the associated budget amendments for the required sponsor match. 
I'll introduce the resolution Please. if there's any questions. Kelly Reed, Airport Director, is here. Uh, this is a resolution um, authorizing the airport to apply for AIP discretionary grant funds for phase two of the terminal project. Phase two includes um, improvement of airport industrial access road and the roundabout development. The um, anticipated cost share is FAA AIP discretionary grant funds in the amount of $3 million. And the city of Stillwater, 10% sponsor match would be $333,334. Um, approval of this resolution authorizes submission of the grant application. And it also um, authorizes, um, approves the budget amendment authorizing the sponsor match and authorizes the mayor or vice mayor to sign any uh, related documents and the match money comes out of existing airport funds that would be a question for finance director christy cluck <laughs> the match funds are coming from our city capital fund okay. thank you counselors any questions about the resolution or action on the resolution i just had one quick question because we Kelly, we see uh, airport act activity and lots of airport grants, and sometimes it's hard to keep track. So can you just remind us kind of what the timing is on these types? So as you submit them, how quickly do you hear back and um, how quickly are those funds kind of ready to spend? Sure thing, absolutely. So this it, one is a little bit of an anomaly. Uh, the FAA reached out to us with additional discretionary funding available. They knew our project needed some more money for the road and roundabout because that was unfunded. So um, this money actually becomes available September 18th, very quickly. Wow. Okay. Wow. Where do we sign? I mean, fast <laughs> grant money is even better than just grant money, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Counselors? Motion to adopt resolution CC-2024-27. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Please vote. That resolution is adopted with a vote of five to zero. Item nine is appointments. On the audit committee, we have an open seat. We've had a couple of applicants, and I would like to nominate Les Austin for the open seat on the audit committee. Second. We have a motion and a second to appoint Les Austin to the audit committee. Can I clarify? This is, a th I assume, Please. a three-year term expiring in 2027. It doesn't mm -hmm. say that on here. That is correct. It okay. doesn't say that on here, All but right. that is my understanding, too. A three-year term right. in 2027. I, I believe that's correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So the motion and the second is to appoint Les Austin to a vacant seat on the audit committee for a term expiring in 2027. Please vote. That's approved with the vote of five to zero. We appreciate Les Austin and the other applicants for being willing to serve on the uh, audit committee. Uh, there's many more opportunities. If you'd like to help serve uh, the community, you can go to our website and the committee page, the boards and committee page will show you any openings that we have. That takes us to reports from the officers and board. Ms. Carnley. Request for an executive session pursuant to 25 OS section 307 B1 of the Oklahoma Open Meeting Act for the purpose of confidential communication regarding the employment, appointment, promotion, demotion, disciplining, or resignation of Stillwater City Attorney Kimberly Carnley. Request for an executive session pursuant to the same authority for the purpose of confidential communication regarding the employment, appointment, promotion, demotion, disciplining, or resignation of City Manager Kimberly Meek. Thank you. City Manager Meek. We hope you can join us for the MISO Line Workers Rodeo on Thursday, September 19th, beginning at 8 a.m. at Boomer Lake Park. The annual event is an electrifying competition to showcase the electric profession and our talented individuals from different cities. You may want to follow the City of Stillwater on Facebook as there will be various live coverage that morning. Thank you to our electric professionals for all they do to keep the lights on. That is a really cool event, if you like interesting competitions, uh, <laughs> stuff you've probably not watched people compete in before. That's a good one. Christy and I were actually talking about it on the radio this morning. It's definitely worth your time, and we certainly do appreciate the work uh, that our crews do. Vice Mayor. Yes, your feedback is needed for Stillwater's new comprehensive plan, which serves as a vision for the next 10 to 20 years of our city's growth. Join us on Monday, September 16th, beginning at 5.30 p.m. at the Community Center for the next community meeting where we will discuss land use, transportation, and housing. 
Also, if you have not yet taken the brief survey, please do so online at stillwaterok.gov slash envision or in person at the Stillwater Public Library. Your voice matters. I think it's so important as we're working, we've got consultants and our city staff are working on this really important document that guides how we'll grow and how we'll develop in Stillwater. Um, it is so important to hear from our community, the lived experience of our community members around housing and transportation that doesn't always bubble up in the data that we're looking at. So we really do need to hear um, from people to understand what it's like to live in Stillwater around these issues. So we hope to see you. Absolutely. Thank you. Councilor Hawkins. Uh, the city is accepting applications for citizen representatives to serve on various committees, including the Stillwater Reinvestment Plan Implementation Policy Committee, the mouthful, also known as the Downtown TIF Number 3. Uh, committees are essential for increased development and infrastructure projects within our community. If you would like to get involved in your local government and help make Stillwater even greater, please consider serving on one or more of these community uh, committees. Excuse me. For more information or to apply, go to stillwaterok.gov forward slash citizen boards. And there are a ton of uh, citizen uh, uh, boards to serve on, and so I really do encourage people to um, look into those if you're interested in being involved in the community. I think it's one of the things that makes our community really great is the folks we have that get involved in these boards and contribute back. Absolutely. Thank you. Councilor Clark. The annual Friends Fall Book Sale at Stillwater Public Library will be Thursday, September 19th through Sunday the 22nd. Thursday is the previous sale, which is $10 at the door and gives you the first shot at thousands of books that are available. And Sunday is the $1 book sale, or so, sorry, $1 bag sale, and they provide the bags. So they fill up your bag and take a books home for a dollar. There are thousands of books priced from a quarter to a dollar. Funds raised from the book sale pay for summer reading programs, community reading initiatives, new library materials, and much more. The library is located at 1107 South Duck Street. For more information about the book sale, go to stillwaterok.gov forward slash library. Thank you so much. And I would plan on a couple of hours because there's thousands of books in multiple rooms. And last time I took my kids, we were there for a while. <laughs> and came home with, with a lot of books. <laughs> Council Harden. Looking for a better way to park for OSU football games? OSU Athletics, City of Stillwater, and Visit Stillwater have teamed up to offer free parking, shuttle service, and more. Park downtown, utilize the park and ride shuttle service. It begins three hours before the game and runs every 30 minutes. The pickup and drop off location at 7th Avenue and Lewis Street. Also, Check out visitstillwater.org for a game day guide. Save money, beat the rush, park downtown, come early, shop and dine locally, and go Pokes. Go Pokes. Thank you. I will uh, let you all know that September is Fire Appreciation Month. Fire Appreciation Month? Fire <laughs> Department Appreciation Month? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's fun. We appreciate fire. We're going to call it Fire Department Appreciation Month, <laughs> just for fun. We greatly appreciate our firefighters and staff with the Stillwater Fire Department for their continued efforts to keep our community safe. The sacrifices they, ma they make, as well as their families, is from their sincere commitment to serve. They're typically first on the scene with emergency calls, in addition to fire-related emergencies, and always ready to assist other cities when possible. You can follow Stillwater Fire Department on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to receive updates and information, or visit the website stillwaterok.gov fire. All right, this time I will move to recess the City Council prior to item 12 on the agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. The vote of 5 to 0. The Stoller City Council will now be in recess. And at this time I will call the Stoller Economic Development Authority to order. Trustees, questions, comments, or Action on the CETA consent docket. Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. second. A motion a second to approve consent. Please vote. We'll vote of five to zero. The consent docket's approved. The star of this agenda will be the Visit Stillwater annual report from Blair Atkinson. Thank you. 
Thank you all. Thank you for allowing me to come and celebrate some of the successes of the visits to water team this fiscal year. I think before this meeting, you got a packet of our likely you're familiar with some of the outcomes from the year, but I certainly want to highlight uh, some of the best and brightest. As the Economic Development Organization, we are proud to recruit thousands of visitors to our area and provide marketing services for over 250 local businesses and over 2,000 events a year. Uh, in the marketing and communications umbrella, uh, we produced over 80,000 copies of the 2024 Guide to the Local Scene. Our website traffic continues to grow. Um, we continue to feature locally held events and unique to Stillwater retailers and restaurants in our monthly promo videos. And we also now coordinate a quarterly 30-second commercial uh, for use of the Visit Stillwater, the City of Stillwater, and the Chamber. Our monthly e-newsletter was distributed to almost 10,000 people in the uh, on the first of every month, and our still-in-the-know postcards are mailed to about 350 businesses. We produced five rack cards this fiscal year, and we continue to maintain the visitor stands at the Stillwater Regional Airport uh, and provide the free gourmet coffee bar, which is beloved by all travelers. <laughs> Uh, Visit Stillwater now coordinates four annual Shop and Fly locally campaigns. So you all may recall the 405 Day, which is April 5th, the National Travel and Tourism Week in May, Crazy Days in July, and Fly Home for the Holidays, which is the end of November and first week through the first week of January. Uh, sales and service team continues to do a great job as well. Uh, during the year, we approved uh, just over $135,000 in grants and sponsorships. That will equate to an estimated 59,000 plus visitors uh, and 17,000 overnight visitors and roughly $6.6 .6 million in visitor spending, so a lot to celebrate there. We also provided assistance for at least 905 events that equaled a conservative 1.9 million in services provided. Uh, at the end of the year, our visitor tax was trending 5% ahead of the, fis the previous fiscal year and is currently sitting at 12% ahead of the same time last fiscal year. And last but not least, I think I emailed this to the committee, but I certainly uh, want to celebrate the visit to Water Team for some recognition that they got this year. Uh, they were recognized with the top honor as the 2024 Tourism Organization of the Year, and they also received the Merit Award for the Best Brochure of Publication for 2023 Stillwater Guide to the Local Scene. Mm -hmm. So they have, we are a wonderful team and I'm proud to be associated with it. That was a lot of information and, <laughs> and clearly you all have that all with you so you can reference it at any time, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thanks, Blair. Trustees, questions? I'd just like to comment that I really appreciate this report every year. There's a lot of good information in here. It's 30 some odd pages long, but it, there's, there's historical data. It, it shows your performance for the year. Um, lots of pictures of events. I just, I just love this report every year. So thank you. Thank for you. A testament to, to Christy and Nicole who are both here. <laughs> thank you for that. Just one more, sorry. <laughs> she took the praise and left. Listen, as part of my job, I realize don't linger too long no, when you ask for questions. Just get I the stall. Head out of Dodge. Yeah. I, was, I, uh, I, mean, I always like to ask what's sort of the next big, you know, what can we, what do we as a city need to be doing? We talk about this a lot, I and mean, we've talked yeah. about this with Visit Stillwater a lot of times with facilities and new facilities that we need, but where do you all see sort of the biggest um, next? things, the next steps, the places yeah. that we need as a city need to be growing. Yes, I think we said last time and we'll continue this mantra with the conference center being a real benefit to this community and we hope that you all will continue to prioritize that. Uh, it is something that I think would really help us in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Trustees, anything further? I got one more question. Sure. I was looking at the uh, occupancy percentages for the hotels. Yes. Is that all hotels in the city? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. So even our little bitty places and our big hotels, right? Okay. And I'm surprised to see the average daily rate is 112, which is more than Oklahoma City at 94. Wow, okay. Just interesting. Very surprised at that. That's great. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. And congratulations, by the way, on, on being the yep. tourism organization of the year that is a big honor and, and well deserved 
and good job on Orange Glow. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Orange Glow thing has been great. All right, trustees, anything further on this agenda? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn CETA. Please vote. The vote of five to zero, the Florida Economic Development Authority is now adjourned. At this time, I will call to order the Stoller Utilities Authority meeting for September 9th, 2024. Trustees, questions, comments, or action on the consent docket? Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. A motion and a second to approve consent. Please vote. With a vote of five to zero, the consent docket is approved. Nothing further on the Utilities Authority agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion and a second to adjourn SUA. Please vote. With a vote of five to zero, the Story Utilities Authority is now adjourned. At this time, I'll reconvene the Stoller City Council meeting prior to item 12 on the agenda. Is there a motion to enter executive session for the purposes requested by the city attorney? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to enter executive session. Please vote. With a vote of five to zero, Stoller City Council will now enter executive session. Is there a motion to reconvene in regular session? So moved. Second. <laughs> <laughs> did you get either of those? I did. Everybody moved motions. and everybody seconded. Please call the roll. Mayor Joyce. Yes. Vice Mayor Jalowski. Yes. Councilor Hawkins. Yes. Councilor Clark. Yes. Councilor Hardin. Yes. We're reconvened with a vote of five to zero. Uh, there's no recommended action from the executive session. None. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please call the roll. Mayor Joyce. Yes. Vice Mayor Jalowski. Yes. Councilor Hawkins. Yes. Councilor Clark. Yes. Councilor Hardin. Yes. With a vote of five to zero, the City Council meeting is now adjourned, and that concludes our meetings for this evening. Thank you.